it's easy to go online and find something cute that arrives quickly. If I wanted to, I could go online right now and find a super cute, super affordable top. Oh look, it arrives in 24 hours for free. Even better. It's convenient, and it's easy on the wallet. But what's the real cost? Most of the clothes that fall under the attractive yet affordable umbrella are actually fast fashion. If you're not familiar with the term, fast fashion is a business model that takes the latest trends in the fashion world and mass produces them into more affordable versions, usually in places like India, Bangladesh, Vietnam, and China. Fast fashion is trendy. It's easy on the wallet, and it arrives in days. But with the cost so low, it makes you wonder, what's the real cost? If you can't tell by the name, fast fashion is actually a terrible thing. For one thing, it is one of the biggest contributors to pollution on the planet, adversely affecting the environment. According to the United Nations Environment Program, the industry is the second biggest consumer of water and is responsible for about 10% of global carbon emissions. That is more than all international flights and maritime shipping combined. Not only that, but fast fashion is also a mass waste producer. 20% of global waste comes from textile dyeing. Per the United Nations Environment C Program, fast fashion produces half a million tons of microplastics a year. Not only does fast fashion adversely affect the environment, but those forced to work it are from some of the world's poorest communities. In those, typically women and children. Those who are forced to work fast fashion experience horrible conditions. They work long hours with little to no breaks. They have little to no access to clean water. They're exposed to harmful chemicals in factories. Injuries and illness run rampant. There's minuscule compensation and deplorable conditions. But you know what's even worse? These people aren't even being paid fairly. Fashion Revolution, the world's largest fashion activist organization, says that factory workers earn about 35 cents per hour. According to a 2019 study by Oxfam Australia, 0% of Bangladeshi garment workers earn a living wage, and 1% of Vietnamese garment workers earn a living wage. These people aren't even being paid enough money to afford their basic needs. According to the International Labor Organization, an estimated 260 million children are employed around the world. Of the 260 million, 65% are engaged in child labor, many of whom experience the previous conditions I've described. It's an unconscionable business model that cares nothing for the environment, the future, and the well-being of those it exploits. Sadly, stopping fast fashion seems impossible. It's not realistic. Economies thrive off of its popularity. In fact, some depend on it. China, one of the world's leading producers of fast fashion, has allowed many fast fashion brands to expand tremendously within its borders. In 2017 alone, Zara, a major perpetuator of fast fashion, opened 179 stores in China. Imagine how many factories were needed in order to meet that demand. Individual governments can only do so much to change the business practices of another country, and the international community's hands are tied by grid gridlock, red tape, and competing interests. But if I'm being honest, I've struggled with this talk. I've spent months thinking about fast fashion, researching its effects, and dwelling on those it exploits, all while trying to think of a solution to this insurmountable problem. I feared that it was a hopeless situation and there was nothing I could do for its helpless victims. We could turn a blind eye. But if tonight, when you go home and you're getting ready for bed and you look in your closet, ask yourself, what percentage of my clothes are considered fast fashion? And if you realize that you've been contributing to this problem, I hope that you, like me, feel inspired to do something. One thing that we can do to curb the adverse effects of fast fashion is to majorly reduce our consumption from them. Instead, we can support ethical and sustainable brands. It might be more expensive, but remember that there is a hidden and immoral cost to the clothes that are cheaper. If you have clothes that are soon to find their way to a landfill, I encourage you to resell it, recycle it, or donate it. But perhaps one of the most important ways we can address the issue of fast fashion is by awareness. The more aware you are, 
the less likely you'll be to buy fast fashion. Do your research. Ask yourself, is it sustainable? Is it made in a country that doesn't support fast fashion? So the next time you need a blouse for an interview, a dress for a date, or shirts for your kid's soccer team, remember to make your choice based off of the production of the item, not the promptness of its arrival or the cost. Thank you.